I got, I got a bark. Yeah. Long story short, get a beat, need me like a swing, need a tree, get a beat, need me like this party, need some baddies and a golfer, need a caddy, like a burger, need a bun and a walk, I need some sun. I flip it upside down, like or right side up? No, I think we should just but, pin it on your shirt. But I'll pin it on the shirt. Yeah, just just pinch it on the shirt right there. Right there. All right. Hello. So, long story short, another artist interview. You already know I'm back in the building. I'm in the studio. It's a beautiful day. The sun's out. The air conditioner's still running, though. It's it's October. Halloween's in a week. And I'm here with my guy. It's toasted? Toasted. Toasted. With a dollar sign. It is a dollar sign. Yeah. And go ahead and tell them your age. You are... I'm 21. 21. Yeah. Damn. I feel fucking old. But I'm not really old. I think I'm just, like, well-cultured, you know? Age is just a number. Age is just a number. So, damn. 21. Coming from Fort Smith. Right. The valley. The river valley. The 479. Was you, so, was you born here or? Um, I was born in Fayetteville at the old Washington Regional. Mm. And then kind of transplained uh, to Alma and then over here. I have actually grew up all around Arkansas. Uh, even grew up in like parts of the... 870 area, and then you know, kind of finished out. Where's that at? 870. Like, uh, there's like um, you know, Little Rock, Maumelle, Jonesboro. Is that is that North Side Little Rock or? Uh, no, nah, just like it was like other projects that I was like living out. How in, old were you when you? Like, uh, all the way from like 14 to 16, so I really was like everywhere. Oh, okay. So 14 to 16, what you're moving across everywhere, like across the state? Or? Yeah, because like, I, um, you know, group home families and stuff. Uh, oh, really? What are you adopted or? No, no. Uh, I was in DHS for a long time too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So your childhood was like? Group home, hospital, really? group home, hospital, back home, hospital. Really? Yeah. So it's kind of rough. Yeah. But you're 21, so you're still young. So damn, you've really, holy shit. For sure, it, it it's been a journey, you know. Yeah, and so so you uh, you uh, what do you what do you love most about Fort Smith though? So you're here, why do you represent Fort Smith? Like I just uh, you know went to school here, grew up with a lot. Through of what here. did you graduate here? In Fort I did Smith? graduate from Southside. Okay, okay, so you went to school here. 2019, yeah. Okay, cool, and that's kind of why you're like rooted in. For sure, and there's just a there's a huge. Uh, I grew up like with hippies and stuff too. There's a huge mm -hmm. Grateful Dead culture, huge hippie culture around here too, and a lot of my roots are planted in that scene and stuff too. So I really um, love you know being around. Yeah, because you got like the 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 hat on. You know what I mean? Kind of reminds me of like a wook or something. I am a wook, bro. Okay, so you're a wook. I'm totally yeah, so, a fucking wook. So Fort Smith graduated 2019, right? 2019. Yep, and like, but you rap. I do What's rap. A, so, but you're you're a wook who raps, and technically does EDM because, I mean, we talked about that kind of off did, camera, but did. we'll get into it. Yeah. So what 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 was like? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do rap, but I love being a wook. Love the love of being a wook. Like why? No, nah, like the love of like, like. You obviously you're a rapper, right? But you kind of have the wook 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 thing going on. What what made you want to like chase rap? I've always loved rap, bro. Um, growing up hearing the sounds of like N.W.A. and kind of like uh, you know Rage Against the Machine, mm -hmm. you know that type yeah, of I'm stuff. I'm familiar with that. A lot of a lot of stuff from that. And uh, Get Rich or Die Trying was actually the first CD I ever got my hands on. Stole from my parents, put it in my Walkman, and played the shit out. Damn. So I was bumping that, like, you know, 12, 11 years old, you know, around the house, talking about getting money and, you know, all kinds of other shit. Mm -hmm. So that ties hand in hand with me being a wook because, like, people, there's services that certain people provide and stuff like that. They do stuff for people. Like, mm -hmm. you can always trade value of what yourself for what you need. So getting money goes hand in hand with, like, providing a service so I just really liked it too and it can't it went well together bro um not like the Flatbush Zombies vibe just like right. me being myself because that's a genuine version of me mm -hmm. and I feel like if I'm going to be the best version of myself why not do it all the way yeah because I don't think there's a lot of like wook rappers there's not you know you might be one of the first wook rappers you think so I mean be real maybe but is he a wook you know be real kind of got plays that like 
hippie vibe style, you know, rap, but like, in my in my opinion, you know, somebody else might not think that, but. I was thinking more like hippie sabotage. Okay, hippie sabotage, maybe, um, who was that, who was that one dude with the long hair, uh, Sun something, maybe, I feel so bad for not knowing the guy's name, <laughs> but those, those are the kind of vibes when I listen to some of your music, um. 21, and, and dude, you have a lot of songs with a, a, a few artists up there in Fayetteville that are doing numbers. But before we get into that, let's get into, and so you reside in Fayetteville, or do you still live in Fort Smith? I live in Fort Smith. Oh, okay, so you reside in Fort Smith. I do. And um, I stay here 24-7. I drive to Fayetteville almost all the time. To yeah, work see, out. we're in Fayetteville all the time, too. And so, what, you just, uh, do you think, how do you think the music scene is in Fayetteville? Dude, honestly, I think it's blown up to a lot bigger than what it used to be. Like I said earlier, there's only a few handful of rappers that I can remember from whenever my young, younger ages were. Mm -hmm. uh, like, there was a few people that were out here on the scene, but in, in Fayetteville, I didn't know there was any, anybody really rapping like that until about a year or two ago. And then it's just And how like long here. have you been rapping? Uh, I've only been rapping for like seven, eight months, like on the scene mm -hmm. giving shows bookings and stuff like that but i haven't really necessarily uh been rapping professionally for that long i would say i would mm -hmm. say uh writing music since i was like 14 but just now acting upon it mm -hmm. and like really pushing for it and you know back on the music scene in favor it's do you think that uh it's a little uh, underestimated 110 percent, bro there's some mm -hmm. of these underground rappers that you have no idea, and they just come out the woodworks, and they're like, bro, play my shit. And you'd be like, nah, I don't want to hear that shit. Mm -hmm. And they're like, play my shit. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'll play your shit. I'll play your shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I want to give everybody a chance. Mm -hmm. I, I want to listen to everybody's shit. People out there listening to mine. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and then you just kind of get crazy. Like, it's crazy, bro. That's how I kind of found some of the people that I work with at my studio and stuff, too. Like, it, there's some real talent out there mm -hmm. and there's some people that just either don't have the time to you know always be a full-time artist or they just don't have the money to be able to just be like shoving it in everybody's faces and stuff yeah um then you've like like we said you've worked with a lot of artists up there you know kyle hippie is 1100 fats is he from uh, fayetteville no he's from little rock okay so he's from little rock and you did a song with him. I do have a song with him. I did do a song with him. Is it released? Or? It is released. It's on all platforms. Okay. All I might have heard it because I listen to a lot of his stuff, too. Um, Kyle, we said Kyle. Uh, who, who, give us some other artists in Fayetteville that I'm missing. I got a song with uh, Carson Attaway. Okay. Um, it's called uh, Did It To Myself. That was all on all platforms, too. Um, I did another song with Kyle and then another song with D.O.U. Kemp. Uh, that one's called Ego Death. Um, I, also yeah, I think had, I heard that and I heard the Kyle song for sure. Yeah. That one's actually did really, really well. Actually. Yeah, the Kyle song is actually pretty lit. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's pretty lit. There's a music video on YouTube, too. Yeah, I watched it. I was like, I was fucking with it heavy. I've worked with uh, some a few cameramen up there and uh, video guys up there, too. They're they're actually, let me shout them out for a second, too. Go ahead. Give them amazing. their flowers. They're fucking amazing. Uh, Revo. Revo did that media. He's out here doing work, you know. Uh, I'd say in Fayetteville. Yeah, bro. And then you know Manny. Uh, I've seen a lot of his work through Hybrid Beats and Fats. Fats has shot them a couple times, and, or he shot Fats a couple times, and it was pretty crisp, pretty good. And okay. Then, um, you know, y'all doing. I think I know thing. Manny. Manny, yeah, he's, a, know, he's from Springdale, I think. Yeah, I, I think I know him. Or we've reached out to each other or something like that. But And then y'all, yeah. bro, y'all are doing y'all's thing. The long story short. So I appreciate general, that. Bro, like, are, are and chilling. really, you know, it, it was me at first. And then, you know, I've had a few falling outs. But now that it's like the team's just getting better and the more, like I have better people on the team now, it's like it's going crazy. Hey, uh, I've really had to let myself know that, you know, being a part of the scene and stuff like this, you mm -hmm. have to let yourself know that, you know, falling out happen and shit, bro, so. Yeah. Uh, I've come to realize that it happens, but there's no reason for those things not to be able to be. So, uh, you know, are you are you more drawn towards EDM or are you more drawn towards rap? Oh. That's, that's really tough, man. Um, see, I really... I really wanted to be on the producing scene of things um, and on making beats. I have tons of beat collabs out there 
uh, with people too, um, like De Niro Love, mm -hmm. um, Trey with the shits, you know, like a lot of Memphis people, heavy hitter Memphis people. Um, but the EDM thing is so mesmerizing to me because you have to make your own 808s, you have to make your own sense, you have to put together everything yourself. And, yeah. Um, you know, writing a song compared to what I could do on FL Studio or Ableton yeah. is like insane. It's, it's, so it's, it's a little more, it's a little more intense. Yeah, it's a little more challenged, I think, so. For sure, but I, the, what makes me draw a little bit more to the, towards the EDM side is that um, there's not a, a, a barrier um, of language because I have people that have listened to my stuff all the way out in like other countries and stuff. Yeah, and, like, we don't know what you're really saying, but the beat's really, really good. Yeah, the the, the sound the, it goes a long way for sure. It and goes so, a long way, dude. I got people in Sweden listening to my music uh, too that are just like we don't know what they're and like. Yeah, I don't know what the saying. fuck you're saying, but the beat hit. All, yeah, yeah, and they all listen to EDM and stuff too. And, mm -hmm. and so I feel like there's not as as much as a a gap a barrier between that right. too. so when people yeah because edm is more of like sound you know like i'm turning up to the bass or like you know what i mean right like, i could see that um how did the other artists feel about uh you know you coming in with the persona you want me to be real about that yeah like what do you what is their initial reaction especially like since i know moolah you know what i mean shout out to moolah um what like, what is their initial reaction? A lot of them are like the same, like, they're like, damn, you're that young? A lot of them are, have the same mm -hmm. reaction of that, too. Um, it, it's, it's a mixed personas, because there's some people out there that uh, really, really hate me, mm -hmm. and that I feel like they don't really get me, and that, or what I say, or what I do, mm -hmm. or what I really stand for, or what I'm really, really rapping about. Right. Um, and then there's some people that are like, don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, Just I, keep going. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I really, really, really good. Like enjoy uh, someone else freshening things up, and I've been pulled aside and told that before. Yeah, like, but what about the artists in general? Like, that's say, what you I've know been told. That's, making... No, that's that's are these are artists. Oh, so these the artists. artists are telling. Yeah. Them. Okay. So they're like, these yeah, are, these like, are, are artists really telling me this. But, this is yeah, not okay. about, like people. These are artists pulling me aside and telling me that, and like yeah, like yo, keep going. Yeah. Because you know you can always get better at your craft. No matter you know, just like me with long story short, you know. All that it, it's like I can get. I'm getting trying to get better with it, no matter what. And so it's like, dude, people tell me I, don't, I haven't had nobody tell me my shit sucks on the street. No, I've seen a lot of like envy, where it's like, oh, this dude with a camera and a mic. But I think those debt jealousy is just like, <sighs> you know, when you're when you're the popular kid and then you realize that you're not even that fucking popular. That's exactly. That's what, what they feel as soon as they see the light in the camera, and they're just like, "Yo, this dude's actually fucking doing shit." Right. And then I had a girl come up to me one time, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm trying to do exactly what you're doing." She's like, "What made you want to do this?" I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "You know, making content even when I was selling clothes was something that I love to do, and it just evolved into where I'm at now." That's pretty dope. But like you said, I mean, people tell you to keep going, just keep going, fuck it, because even with music, bro, music is something that'll last forever, just like this video. Right. And all the clips. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's important, though, because you're, you know, hip-hop is different, like you said earlier off camera. EDM and hip-hop are two different worlds. Right, 110%. You know, like, you tell them what you said, you know. Um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the time with the EDM game, bro, like, a lot of these homies are like, if you're good, come play. We'll pay you to come play. Right. And, you know, if you sound fire and you got that fire sound, a lot of them will help you get managers they'll help you get signed they'll help you get placements right and do the damn thing for you now with the hip-hop game i've seen a lot of the a lot of the opposite bro people paying for shows people paying for you know features not swapping like and it's just like if you really want to stimulate the economy for what it is it the money should go both ways you know yeah um and a lot of the time that it's reciprocated as well it's a business and i get that 110 percent if that's the price right. that's the price right um uh, but there should there could be a, there could be a little more love shown on the ends of like you know doing things for certain people or like what you say you're gonna do yeah because hip-hop is such like once you make a connection you don't give it up right but in edm it's like oh yeah i know so and so go fuck with them tell them i sent you exactly and fuck with you and it's not like this like you know like weird barrier of like nah i just want to fuck with 
What it, what it really is. You know is, what I mean? It's so weird, dude. Yeah. What it really is, bro, is like right. everybody wants to be the middleman so they get broken off a piece where it's just like, man, I'll right. send you to the guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that's but You're that, speaking facts. That's too easy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. In hip hop. In hip hop. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I don't, haven't even made a lot of music. I've made some music, but to be serious about it and to see where, you know, where it can really go is like you said, like. You know, they want they you could damn near pay to play in hip hop, no matter oh, what. Dude, but in EDM, had... it's like fuck, they'll pay you to come. Exactly, perform. bro. I'm talking about which could have, which does eventually happen in hip hop, but it takes festivals. so long to build your your shit up in hip hop unless you're just like fucking Yeet or well, even Yeet, he's been rapping for ten years, you know. Really? He's think, been rapping for ten years. Eight or ten years. He's 2012. Someone fact check that. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Some of that, yeah, I looked that up. How long has Yeet actually been rapping? 2012, that's 10 years, right? I know he has. What about the UK kid who was like Central C? Um, I don't even know who you're talking about. How can about. I be homophobic? My bitch is gay. Oh, uh, the drill rapper. Yeah, Fucking Central C Pop- from. Oh, that's yeah, cent- Shout out Central bad. C. Central C? That's his name. Uh, I've never heard of him. Central, the word out. Central, and C S. Well, C E E. How long has he been rapping? About seven years. Seven, seven years? years? Seven years, cuz. Damn. 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 But in hip hop, you know, you know, you're kind of going down both lanes. EDM. Yeah. Like, are you making EDM music? See, yeah, but I'm not putting any of it out. Okay, so you're like, what? Are you stashing it? Or are you waiting? To be honest, it's good, but it's not like my hip hop. Mm-hmm. So it's like, focus on one thing at one time, conquer and divide. Right. So I feel like at the end of the day. I'm truly an artist, but I want to be a producer, so like the reverse Kanye. Well, I mean, a good artist is going to be able to produce his own shit. All of them do. 110%. But like, I'm my own worst critic, so I'm just like, Mm -hmm. "Ah, that's not good enough. Or like, it doesn't sound like that, or what I want it to be. See, I'll have a particular sound of what I want it to sound like in my head whenever I like paint the masterpiece at the end. It's completely something different. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, never, never satisfied, if you will. So if you had to choose for the rest of your life to either go to EDM concerts or rap concerts, where are you going? EDM, hundred percent. All the day. I'd go see. So like, Stranger. what is and what is the for all the people out there that don't really know what the pins recommend, like or like what are they? Dude, these are like. What's the pins for? You know, like for the people that don't know. Okay, so like a lot of them um, in the festival scene, kind of mm-hmm. like status symbols. Um, you know, for how long you've been going, who you know, what you can get, who you can meet, da da da. Hmm. Um, like this. So, like here. the pins are like you buy them or what? You buy. They're like, uh, like this hat, bro, is probably worth like six hundred bucks, just because of the pins. Damn. Um, but there's not value in it like that. Like you go to festivals, people like pins. They're like a currency. Hmm. You can trade stuff for it. You can buy stuff with it. You can. And and at the end of the day, I don't do tattoos. Cause um, I have a phobia of needles, so like okay. there's a Nathan Huffman pin out here. Shout out to Nathan Huffman. He's an Arkansas uh, pin maker, um, and this is his pin. Um, and uh, you know that's a really hard pin to get, but I have the vintage you know shirt to match it. And then there's some other ones like this one fucking spins, yo. Like, and that one's damn. That one's that's old crazy. As fuck. I, like I bought these. It off spins. Let me see it again. Spin it again. That's yeah. fucking crazy. They're all numbered too. They're all pieces of art. There's people's artwork. In so there. that's literally yeah. Because I've got a couple of pins once from uh, my buddy who does tattoos, and um, just because he wanted to make some pins, I'm sure he he had the idea from like that. But and they were numbered. It was like you know something out of fifty or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, damn, there's only fifty pins. Exactly. So like, if you run into and some... you could trade them. What do you trade for? You nudes know, nudes or no, no, like you know, maybe you want some party favors from the okay, the tents a few down, or you know, no, no, shit. or like there's a grilled cheese lady, shout out Wanda, you know, she's to Wanda's grilled cheeses, you know, at all the festivals. Oh, so she's a good one, and, and so if you give her a pin, she'll give you a grilled cheese, bro. But that's the thing about it, bro. I've never had to have like currency to do anything or anything because it's on my head, so because it's like, oh, I'll go to a festival, buy a couple pins, and like. It trade for him, bro. Or it's like, you ever seen the Penny hmm. series with Ryan Tannehan? No, maybe. Is that a movie? No, it's on YouTube. And this dude goes across the world with a penny. 
Mm. It's like trapping up to stuff, being in the trenches and. and oh, well, he starts out with a penny and, and then like trades for a pen. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen. I've seen some of his like, shit. It's yeah. like it's literally real life like that, bro. It's like oh, okay. Some you may ground score a pen and then sell it for twenty bucks and then you got twenty bucks for food or like it's it's Damn. like that. What, that's just like a, there's a whole different world on your fucking hat. It's a culture, for real. Yeah, dude, it is. And like, I, I'm not like a rapper, but like as a hip hop person, when I see somebody with a hat like that, I'm like, yo, they've been through some shit. There's stories, bro. I could tell you like, stories from festivals. Time. Like, what's probably some of the craziest shit you've seen at a festival? Top five. Bro. Top five. Top five craziest shit. Oh, okay. Starting with number five, I'd have to say um, someone dumped uh, LSD into like liquid LSD into their nose and their eyeballs. That's probably number five. Mm. Uh, number four, like in their nose, like where they like like there's a dropper. You dump it. There's a dropper that comes in the vial, and she he she, she just she snorted was, the yeah like in his eye, and then like straight in his nose, and he was the rest is history. Okay. He was good though. Five. He was good. He was alive. Uh, number four, this chick boofed a ten strip. You know what boofing is? Upper ass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole ten strip. Damn. All ten at one time? At one time. What the fuck? Ten strip to get lit. You watching it? You uh, see her butthole? She was open about it. Kind of just. Oh my like, god. And, you know. I'm about to boof ten strips. Everybody come watch. <laughs> what <Basically>. the fuck? <laughs> Number, how do you top that? Uh, number three, I was at main stage at a, at a bird's fest and this chick was masturbating at the front stage. Yo, while Jimmy hand Tim on the playing, bean. Yeah, she was playing uh, DJ the VJ. Yeah. And she, did she finger banging herself? Yeah, 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 the whole nine yards. Oh my God. And then there's like a big Buddha statue that was just sitting there. She so was just fucking comfortable. She was comfortable. I bet she was comfortable. Yeah. yeah, she was a little bit more uncomfortable. That was number three. That was number three. So we got number four, lady boofing ten strips. Three, lady masturbating in front of who? The main stage. The main stage. Oh, at a bird stage. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. They're like the tribute band is literally like yeah. in the mid guitar solo. <laughs> she's, and she's looking like, down like, damn, work it. Yeah, maybe. Wow. That one scarred me. That one scarred me. Okay. I was what, young. What I about was like numbers? 16 years old, 17 years old. And they let old. you in a bird's fest? Man, I've been doing it. Was it man. general admission? Was like un, n all general age? General admission used to be like 60 bucks. But for all age, is it like a... I guess so. Was I used it, to like, pull up to the festival with a note from my mom's. What? That would be like... <laughs> my son my needs to get in the festival. Yeah. He's a... Uh, <laughs> you know, he's I'm part of the director. 17, 18 program. years old and got like a fucking quarter of weed under my nut sack trying Damn. to get into this festival. <laughs> okay, what about number two? What are we at at number two? Um, number two, my buddy um, actually got sold some like research chemicals of oh, some wow. Molly. And um, we all told him not to do it because mm -hmm. we don't really like, you know, do that. So we just go to, we go to the music. But mm -hmm. he was, you know, in his own adventure, is like we love to call it. Mm -hmm. um, and he got butt naked and went into the Mulberry River um, for a long time. Like all night, we lost him, couldn't find him. Did he drown? Uh, no. Was no. he swimming out there butt naked? Um, yeah. In the tall ass water in the river, and he was gone for the whole so whole sets. And so we went back to our camp during set breaks, mm -hmm. and he was gone, like gone for all night. And the last time that we had went back to check to see if he was like there maybe, and frantically like going up because we didn't want to go to like the cops or nothing that are up at the gate because no one's there to ruin your fun at the end of the day. Yeah, he's butt naked at the camp when we come back, yo. They let him be butt naked, dude. That's okay there. Everything's okay. It's a different society. Everything's okay. Holy shit. So you I just mean, see... I guess. Uh, you want to watch me boof 10 strips? <laughs> That's going to be the fucking... Wow. <laughs> what about number one? How do you... That's what I'm trying to figure out. How do you top a lady boofing 10 strips of acid? Was it acid? Yeah. It was a, it was Fuck, dog. Pure L25. What a warrior to that lady. Oh, dude. Yeah. Damn. Number 10? No, oh, number one. Number, number one. one. My bad. Number one. <laughs> You might be feeling that 10 fucking hits of ass of that lady fucking boofed <laughs> shit. 
Uh, number one, <laughs> I would definitely have to say um, the craziest thing that I've seen out there is definitely like it's not nothing crazy to do with drugs. It's actually the type of environment that it is. The craziest mm. shit I've ever seen out there is people going home with like 50, 60 racks that are not vendors. That are not. What are they selling water or what the fuck are they doing? Selling hat pins, selling merchandise, selling oh, stuff that shit. they make or just like epoxy or services. Or like, I've seen people out there sell yoga classes before. But I, I literally watched this man go at home, the festival? Yeah, bro, with 50 racks. Damn. 50 racks. And he was just. Maybe I'm in the wrong shit. I don't know. Fuck, yoga? Yoga. His his old like his mm. old it wasn't the same people but like yeah I see people's old ladies selling like yoga classes or just like just basic and that's their, that's their hustle huh tie dye T shirts epoxy ashtrays mm -hmm. what's your favorite thing to buy out there happens oh well happens. what a dumbass question I should have fucking knew that <laughs> then the happens thing that's like it's like it almost reminds me of commentary or uh, yeah it, it reminds me of um. Like the canteen at prison, you know they're selling like soups and shit for fucking. Well, that's currency out there, you know. And so the pins is like. But that goes fucking with the currency. culture, though. Like, yeah, that too. So the, I guess that's part of the. The best ground scores, though, are the friends you make along the way. Yeah. So like a lot of those people will remember you next year and be like, yo, I partied with that guy. Let me. Right. He can come camp with us. That lady boofed ten strips of acid. Yeah, she can definitely come party. Yeah, with she us. can. <laughs> bring your asshole too. Let's boof other shit. I just I don't think I think it's just crazy how she stuck but it up her ass. That's a the kiddos, bro. Fucking kids boofers. Come out there and you know they're up by ten o'clock, nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. But like the kids, the culture all the way from the kids that are like ten, eleven or younger, all the way to people. I've seen people get married out there. What? I've seen people who have babies out there. Damn. Like like, birth their child children at this at birds fest and festivals what and stuff. Fuck? And you know like, that baby, you were born at birds fest. Exactly. I literally. Shit you out of my vagina and to my to my hands and you're my little bird shit. <laughs> Crazy, holy shit, birth, bro. Birth, Fuck. not just one, like a few kids, like three or four. People just like it's what? Such a, it's a sacred grounds, bro. It's a special. Holy place. shit! These festivals where these places get thrown and stuff, people really like connect with the energy out there. That's 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 fucking crazy. Imagine a baby being born like a UFC event. That's crazy. That's crazy, but I, I mean, I guess it's kind of natural when they're outside and they're not at a UFC event, like you said in the Mulberry Mountain. It's like in a, it's like in a field, isn't it, or like a? It's an Ozark, yeah. Okay, I think I've, I've, I've seen some stuff about it. Is that the main one you've gone to? Where's it? What's the? Have you been to um, Burning Man? No, I haven't been to Burning Man. But what's I've like the biggest one went, you went? Wakan. Wakan. So that's was, the one in Mulberry. That was on top of the Mulberry Mountain. Mount. See, there's two festival venues where people, the two different family zones, mm -hmm. and on top of the mountains where they have like backwoods and Wakan for, because it can it can literally have like twenty thousand people there. Okay, so it can hold a lot of people. And the one down below it can hold a, about five to seven, maybe eight thousand people. Mm. But it's only 3,000 people have ever came to like a bird's fest maximum. But maximum. There, the last Wakan festival that I went to, it was a friends and family event because it was only the second one since COVID had happened. Right. So like if you bought your tickets, you got your tickets type shit. Uh, there was 10,000 people. Sold every ticket. They made Damn. millions of dollars, bro. Those, it was thousands of people. Those there. people there, yeah. Those 10,000 people, that's a lot of fucking people. Yeah, literally. People from like Chicago, Canada, uh, New York, California, Nevada, like... I met people all around the world. Well, damn. That have came just to see like Liquid Stranger, Immersive, you know, all those people, Space Jesus. Right, just to watch them perform. Yeah, and they're all they're EDM. EDM. They're EDM. All yeah. EDM. All EDM. Damn. And you, do you haven't? You, you said you have EDM music. You just haven't released any of it. Right. And you, I have a couple. And what do you? What? What do you? What's stopping you from releasing it? Um, the longevity of like what I'm trying to do with myself. So you're really trying to focus on the rap yeah. and stick to it. Is, um, but I'm working on projects to bring them together. Don't get me wrong. So you're trying to bridge the gap, I guess, you know, between when it comes to EDM, EDM and rap. When it com yes. Hmm. When it comes to EDM, I have realized that there is people out there that are a little bit, and see, I'm not like egotistical, I can say this, that are a little bit better than me, bro. Like, they're a lot better than me, actually. Right. And that have been doing that for a lot longer, too. A little bit better because they've been doing it a lot longer than I have, and mm -hmm. they have a little bit more 
skill and they also build their own 808 packs they all build all their own synth packs and yeah they they're not them. they're not buying no you know any of the creating them from scratch making yeah. their own samples and shit yeah because i've seen a couple of edm dude or i know a couple of edm dudes in, in alma shout out to them dudes that they create their own sounds they're doing their own shit really i didn't even know anybody in alma made edm dude i think it's pretty big out there dude like really? some of my friends like you know, like some of my buddies that I know, they're younger too. They're like 23, 22. They, they fuck with EDM heavy, bro. Who I grew up out my there. buddy, my buddy Chris Smith. I know who that is. He's a wook. I know exactly who he that drives, is. He drives Tri-State, yeah. Ozark 808. Is that his name? No, that's the whole group of that's like a lot of people. Oh like yeah, the, yeah, Chris Smith is obviously one of my good friend Mo Elliott. That's my good buddy at work. You uh, know Harrison Jones? Shout Harrison out Space Jones. Base. I don't think I know Harrison Jones. Or uh, Trippy Hippie. Trippy, I know Trippy Hippie. Yeah. yeah shout out Trippie. Spencer. Shout out to Baby. Yeah, I got a things working in the mix with them too. They're what do great. they think about you being doing rap? They've known me before I've done this too. So like no. I was watching them. Play. Are they like you fucking traitor? No, no. Uh, <laughs> You're a fucking wook. <laughs> <laughs> they do think that. You know? Um, they've they've because I don't me. know a lot of uh, EDM people that are like I fuck with rap too. When I brought up. Do you them. know what I mean? When I brought up to them, like, hey, uh, I want to bridge the gap between EDM and hip hop. They were like, really? Like, mm -hmm. they were totally okay with it. They were like, let's do it. Um, you know, they, they, were really, they were really fucking with the idea. And so I just kind of took it and ran with it. Right. Because at, at some points I was just like, hey, will you just make me a track and I'll rap on it. And they were like, nah. But what, did, how did they feel about you wanting to do rap? They they were, were they like, excited about it because like, I was going somewhere with it. Were they like, um, I'm trying to think of the word or a word for it, but were they like wanting to help you progress? Or were they like, yeah, that's what, what the fuck are you doing? See, most people you know? that you approach when it comes to like music, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll listen to it. Or like, eh, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Or like, sure, for money. Uh, when I brought it up to them about being a rapper, being an artist, you know, just maybe collabing on stuff in the future, they were totally like down with like the cause and like didn't. Supporting you, you know? And, you know, I probably might get shit about this later, but they didn't want to charge me they didn't want to be like hey i need this much money hey i want to like you know have this song royalties right. back or anything they were just totally like let's get the project done let's let's get to work mm -hmm. so me saying that i feel like they really were like down like they they really supported me in a sense to where like keep going right because not everybody just wants to go out and just be like you're the shit or like you are awesome or like not everybody has that same type of and, and a lot of people still might say that but they still feel some yeah. type of way say you know, one thing like, you're facing behind your back like a hundred percent because i mean like i've already noticed it doing what i'm doing so it's like you know but for the most part i guess they were supporting you you're like supported. bridging between the rap and the they the got EDM. homies that rap Cause too. Because it, it kind of surprises me that even Mula, Kyle Hippie, 1100 Fats, that they actually are down to fucking... It's crazy. Like, they're actually down to fuck with you. Me too. They're bro. like, damn, he's kind of... He's different, you know what I mean? Like, coming from the EDM scene, still might have that, a little bit of that EDM sound going on. You know? I, I feel like, listen after listening to some of your music, you're still trying to find, like, your form. Because I want to be different. Of, of rap. Because I want to be different. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to feel like I'm riding the whole Suicide Boys way. Right. I don't want... Because that's what a lot of stuff that has blown up in Fort Smith and Van Buren area has. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people have taken a liking to. Right. Um, and I don't like to talk about anything that's not real. Like, all of the stuff that's in my raps are either mostly freestyles or stuff that I've literally have been through in my childhood or my lifestyle until now. Mm -hmm. That was my lifestyle. That's who I really am, and a lot of my shit. Um, so I, 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 to be completely real, like I just, you know, trying to be the realest version of myself that I possibly can be on the track. And I'm very surprised that those people have fucked with me too yeah. on these tracks, actually sending me features back, actually sending me beats, pointing me in the right direction. You know, 
Shout out Rook, too, honestly. Yeah, shout out Rook, man. Shout out Rook. Dope, dude. I got to meet him a little bit. Hopefully, we can connect in the future. For sure. Um, you know, shout and I know a lot of people uh, probably have their feelings about, uh, you know, Spida too. I'm gonna bring him up. Mm -hmm. You know, Spida's been pretty helpful and along with the situation too. Uh, you know. Yeah, shout out Spider, man. Shout I don't really Spider. know Spider, but shout out him. Um, you know. He's a good dude. He gives everybody a chance. That's good. Bro. Uh, and and I mean, does he, he? He he's pretty well known up there. Yeah, he's. Super I hear well his known. name all the time. So super shout well out known. Spider, man. Doing things. Pushing the movement, they both very, they very much so hold their worth and their value about what the stuff that they say that they're going to do for those people, mm -hmm. and I can respect it 110 percent, you know, for sure, because they've uh, put me in a lot of front of a lot. They've put me in front of a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, even if it's just at the studio, or just like, hey, come pop up at this event, right? Just to come show some love or something. And I've always run into someone that's like, hey, I've heard of you. You're toasted, right? And um, I've never even fucking heard of them. Or it'll be like, I want to fuck with them. And then I eventually running into them. Mm. And, uh, you know, they'll be like, yeah, can I grab a picture, bro? Shout out Six Baby, too, bro, because he took all my pictures at the last last show. That yeah, we were shout all out at. Six Baby, bro. Uh, he was cool, dude, too. He got one of the 479 hats we made, first run, blue run. Really? Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, somebody stole it from him or something happened at a concert. But shout out yeah, Six Baby. Shout out Six Baby. I shout won't out. forget you. Blonde haired, skinny, pretty boy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what was I going to say? Uh, where do you where do you see yourself in about five years with the, with the rap? Is that all you do? You you got a full time job or what? No, I do this all the time. This is what I do full time. So you're making bread off the rap? No. 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 But you're working towards it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very and much. You're so out there grinding. Every day. Still I investing in yourself. Yes, I bro. Dope. I've literally gone. You know, if you're not if you're a content creator and you're not going broke. Spending all your money reinvesting it into yeah. videos or into shit you need, equipment, lights or whatever. Fuck, then dude, you're like, not doing it right. Yeah, you know, tell them. Make sure you pay the rent. Make sure you take care of what you need to take care of. Yeah. But if you're not reinvesting all the way 110 percent, bro, then what are you doing? Yeah. And I, I truly feel that way because I've came back to the studio with no money and right. uh, told, you know, my people that and they were just like you know we understand bro it happens because when you budget for certain shit it just goes yeah you know, when you got it right. when you got to keep it going you got to keep it going you got to keep pushing keep 100 percent. you know um, i don't scam or nothing like that so don't get right. it twisted I, I really i really do out here i do the odd jobs or i do yeah I do, so you're grinding you're a hustler do, yeah. yeah i do the shit that other people won't do to do for myself right you got to, though. I mean, it's, it's, as long as you're investing back into yourself, that's all that matters. Not just that, but the people that I'm around, too, because that people too. That, that obviously do favors and shit what, for what, me. What, where, what is you're putting in your brain and, like, who you're around and, like, everything, even what you watch on your phone, all that shit matters. 110%, bro. 110%. Um, all of that shit matters. So, do you have any big projects coming up? With anybody or like maybe a solo project? Um, I'm dropping an album, my okay. first album, my first independent album on the 28th. Mm -hmm. It's called The Trip Tape. It'll be on all platforms. Um, it's going to be seven songs. Gunner, DTB Gunner, uh, is the only feature on there and the rest are just, just me because I've never okay. really had tracks with just by myself. Yeah. And I have a bunch of them, but those were like the seven ones that I just wanted to release for now. Right. The cover art is dope, dope as fuck, dope as fuck. What? What? Is it? Is it? Is it uh, more rap or is it more? It's rap. It's all rap. It's all rap. Okay, all rap. dope, dope. It's all rap. And it's Damn. all produced by some uh, a producer that's uh, part of my label too. Shout out, hundred percent. Uh, 100% are you are you signed to a label or no I'm completely independent man oh so you're independent, I'm independent. okay dope, no dope I am my own label uh, South 23rd Street Entertainment is my label oh damn uh, okay uh, I got so you're running under your own wing yeah dope dope yep I got um, you know like I said shout out Rook I got people in my corner shout out Spider mm -hmm. that are telling you know me when and where to put my game in on time and stuff too right you know, if Arkansas wins, they win too, bro. At the end of the day, yeah, they got a bunch of they got a bunch of stuff around them. A hundred percent. 
Um, but yeah, bro, uh, it's a it's a complete hip hop album. It's produced by 100%. Uh, he's not signed to my label or anything mm -hmm. like that. He's just uh, someone that's a homie that's been putting on for us and stuff too. You know, just I helping asked him to join the project and stuff too. And he's crazy with it, bro. He's got he's made beats for Big Scar. Um, Kenny Money, right? All of the Memphis scene, and he's a Memphis producer. Oh, he's a Memphis producer. Yeah. Okay. He's the only dude that I've ran into that can make old school boom bap. It's all old school boom bap. I really like the Buffalo, New York scene too. Okay, that's so that's that I like. All right, it's got like a little bit slower tempo. Yeah, okay. it's all it's all old school stuff. And uh, when does that come out? The twenty eighth. The twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. um, Damn. That's the same day that I have a show venue coming up. Is that in October? Yeah, October. 28th. Oh, this month. This month. Couple Damn. Weeks, like next week. Yeah, so we're going to try to have this out before then, but if not, you guys go check that out because it'll probably either almost be out or be out by the time you guys see this, so turn up. First of all, how do you feel about that? I mean, I damn, great, you're 21, bro. you're about to drop an album, you know, you've got decent connections in, in, in Arkansas, you know, where do you really see yourself in five years with it? Bro, in, in five years, I, I see myself, you know, doing the damn thing, but actually getting paid from it, bro. Yeah. Um, I really see Seeing myself... Seeing a return, like you know. Or royalty cuts, you know, back... Yeah. Um, you know, like... Uh, in reality, bro, I really see myself somewhere here still, too, though, because I don't think I'd ever move away um, from this scene. Unless it became like super dangerous or just like you know mm. crazy, because um, I, I I really I love I, I want to put on for Arkansas because there's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of right. people. There's a lot of not just money to be made, but talent to be discovered and people to right. be seen and shot. And um, I really I really 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 want Arkansas to shine, bro. Yeah. I came from here. I've lived here my whole life. I uh, think slowly but surely we're getting our we're getting our feet wet in it. Right. No, 100%. You know? The scene has changed dramatically in the last two years. Even with me popping out, like, dude, it's like they've never seen it before. There's not enough people shooting they haven't. the artists. Bro. They're not. They're not. And not even that. I don't think that um, people are, like, they're aware of it, that it, it goes down like it does. You know what I mean? No. Not even with the street interviews or artist interviews. Like, you know, we're in, we're in the studio right now. We're actually, right. this is part of it, being an artist. You know, telling people, like, where you came from and what you have planned. 110%. And we don't have enough of that in Arkansas. Mm -mm. And then some of the people that are doing it, I'm not trying to knock them, but they could do a better job at uh, wanting to get the people out there. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Do you think Arkansas is a hating state? Like, they don't want to put on for the next guy? Yeah, yeah. And but I also think that it's slowly changing with people like me, people like Rook, people like maybe Spider that, like, want to go above and beyond and show like the talent that we have because I'm like I'm like I consider myself like a lower end media group right now but eventually I'm going to be up there with like no jumper and shit right where it's like anybody I throw on here blow up they're going they're going to get so much hate that they blow up or they're just going to blow up because they're they're good you know what I mean so it's like the hate has always been like that where it's like you know I don't want to Positional power type shit. Yeah, like I don't want to give up my connect. Like, who is this dude? Or, you know, I don't want to put him on the show because he really ain't doing shit. He only got eight thousand followers. This dude got twenty five thousand. You know what I mean? It's always right. dumb, something dumb. It's like I don't give a fuck about how many followers. It's you like, got. what can you do for me? Type shit. If yeah, it's not beneficial it, to me, I don't want to have a part in it. Yeah, and and and, and selfishness. It's always just like, well, I got it. They don't. I got the connect. Fuck it. I'm just gonna. Right. You know. Right. And I think that's what sets this apart is in me is like I'm I'm doing I want to do it for everybody. That's cool. That's and that's, you know what dope. I mean? that's like, mad. Anybody dope. that's wanting to invest in their career, come and get in front of the camera. To tell your story, you know. Unintended, like, bro. Not selective. Like I'll do anybody. Like I'll interview Rook. I don't give a fuck. Well, like I'll interview everybody. Well, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Like for real. No, I, you know, I mean, everybody has requirements, like you said, like keeping the bread going around. Because, like, obviously, I have 
rent, all, everything that you got to pay. You know what I mean? We, everybody yeah, has everybody's got to pay. There's overhead. Yeah, like, bro, like, And I'm thinking, well, fuck, when I do fucking get bigger than what I am now, it's only going to be beneficial to the people that's already been solidified in, in what I've done now. Right. And supported me when I only had 10,000 followers. And when I have 100,000 or a million, you know, those eyes are always going to be, those new eyes are always going to be, be discovering Toasted, Moolah, Sleepo, all these people that have been grinding or are grinding, you know, they're going to get the, because hell, think about that. Three years from now, long story short, blows up. Your video is going to be on there. 100%. And they're going to be like, they're going to want to watch all my shit, even the shit that I was shitty from the beginning. And they're going to figure out who you are and like discover you. I even do that shit you know? on your Instagram page. I'm not going to lie. I've, those They're good videos, bro. All the way back to last, last, the last of middle of last year. Yeah, and Damn, I appreciate that. They're they're good videos, bro. They're and funny. You can, you can see you can see the progression. Like I feel like if you go back, like you'll see like, and then now the editing style and just how everything is. It all falls in place. It all falls in place, like literally. Just like meeting Rook, Dude. I heard about him, but then I'm walking down Dixon, and I'm I'm beside the liquor store and it's dark and, you know, we were smoking a little bit of bud, and uh, they just was walking down the sidewalk. And we would just happen to be in that part of the sidewalk, and nobody was around us because we were smoking. We were right there by the liquor store, like on that side street. Right. And we just it just happened. It was him with and Kyle. Kyle's always, you know, shout out Kyle. He's <laughs> always Kyle. he lives up there, but you know, meeting him and then just hear him say like, "Yo, keep going." Yeah, it's dope, bro. It's 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 yeah. uh, it, it's crazy how um, that studio is is actually really jumping. With uh, how many artists are in and out of there. There's no, so many is. projects that come out of that studio, too. Uh, because he believes in so many fucking people. Well, he um, gives him. We, not even me, but, like, he he gives everybody opportunity. 110%. Like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Right. Even if you shit, who cares? Yeah, bro. Like, you gotta start somewhere. I've heard him You be will like, get better. I've heard him be like, yo, I really don't want to mix this dude, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Yeah. That's how you know you have a, a dope person around you um I, I i know whenever i first came in the studio too that i uh was working on some things and uh i really like i, I don't really like to brag on myself but i really feel like i've grown throughout the, right. the year that i have worked there and too and and because of having someone that's like like rook himself to be able to be like genuinely tell you like hey this is and want to win want to support you yeah, and work want with you. you to win bro wants you to win want, yeah because you gotta win mm -hmm. like in your heart you gotta there, you gotta win there's no other option got even to. though rook can push everybody you just got you gotta know that you gotta you you gotta win 110 percent um and that's crazy you're so you're so dedicated at 21 to pursue it's like i know felt like i wanted to do this do you have you lost any friends or Family or anything at all, you know. Um, I'd say I'd say like you know like the saying of like an old soul. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'm one of those, and I've definitely lost friends, family, uh, social groups, social statuses because of wanting to be an just a simple artist or even wanting to even step foot in this scene. Doing rap or rap. Or music in general. For sure. Just music in general. Well, music in general, but you know rap, I mean? the rap category for sure. Because I got other homies that make country music and stuff too. Like, shout out Wally West. Like, right. he's dope. Fire. He he can go to Soul Studios. Where yeah. Me and you, studio. We, we can't go to Soul Studios. No, I got to pay to go there, but I'll still go there. Well, I mean, they tell me, like, oh, we don't want hip-hop or EDM. Yeah, but... Everybody has their price. 110%. Which is outrageous, probably, but, <laughs> you know, that is, then that's, that's the hating part. Yeah. You know, it's like, damn, you know. But, uh, you know, he's really humble about shit like that, too. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a good guy. So I don't, I don't have no hate about none of that stuff. Um, but, yeah, bro, uh, I've, lost, I've lost a lot of friends to this shit, man. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people that were either, like, mad at me because I asked them to share my shit or mad at me because their their chick is in my in my inbox saying that your yeah. shit's good bro like I'm re or reposting it and stuff too so mm -hmm. um, you know it, it it goes comes and goes it's like money bro um, I have to keep telling myself at the end of the day though 
that I know an enemy is an enemy, so an op will always be an op. Um, but you know, friends change, bro. Your friends will can, you yeah. know, change on you at any time. Yeah, people change, at, and hundred two percent, bro. So. But if you know, you know, your op's gonna be an op. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they will never change. But Pretty your much. friends that are close, if they see you winning, they see you doing something, they could change, bro. A hundred percent. They could change. Because I've definitely seen it, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, even when I first started making clothes, I've seen people change. Your clothes like, shit has gone a long way, too, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. It's dope. So many people uh, want me to restart it. I'm just like, I'm white. I don't know yet. I'm on the fence about it. Because I can always pick it up. I'm just so in, in tune with Long Story Short. But uh, I, I was hearing some of your lyrics earlier, and one of them that really stood out to me was, um, I wake up and put Keith in my coffee. I do do that. What the fuck is that about? Keith is activated, bro. Yeah, and you're just like dumping a spoonful of it in your coffee? Yeah, dog. That's fucking nuts. I used to work at the dispensary, right? So it's like an instant edible or? Yeah, so... Keith is already pre-activated. Yeah. And I would w work these long ass shifts at the dispensary. So six in the afternoon until four in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so it'd be like three nights in a row. I'd get, you know, a gram of like nice, real sativa stank Keith, And, you know, put a helping, a generous amount in my coffee. So I could, you know, be up, do my chores at the dispensary and, you know, maybe That's write a little music crazy. and just serve people their bud, bro. Damn. But it's real shit. That bro. shit stood out. I, mean, I was like, who puts Keith in their fucking coffee? That is some real stoner shit. That is some stoner shit. That is some Wook stoner <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> dog. Wook that shit. is dope. Because uh, I've never heard that. I really found that out during the winter months of last year, too, though, because I couldn't smoke because of all the COVID shit going mm -hmm. on. And my throat would get real irritated. And I'm like a hash rosin guy, too. I love hash rosin. Um, you know, I'm actually sponsored by one of those dudes that are out there that put on for another part of what I do in life, too. So, damn. Uh, just shout hash. out that guy. Just hash, bro. Hash. Just hash. Damn. Um, and so, what, you just decided to start putting Keith in your coffee or like? Because I couldn't smoke anymore, bro. Right. So, that was like your alternative instead of like, I'm going to buy a fucking edible, you know, like. Well, Edibles are cool and all, but like, um, you only see sweet edibles. Yeah. If you really think about it, you only see sugar-based edibles or like. I'm seeing. Well, yeah, Coca-Cola, yeah. Or like, you know, it's like pretzels or something. I fucking hate. Who the fuck wants to eat a medicated yeah, no, pretzel? Yeah. And tincture tastes like shit. So I was just like, yes. Keith is Keith is cool. I don't know who's like. I want a bottle of tincture. Nobody. You got to be a different breed. Well. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> But the the Keef and the coffee, that's that's kind of smart, I think. I got to fuck with that. It's the move. Like, I got to try that one day in the future. It is the move. Or like Keef and some hot cocoa or something. Uh, apple cider was the actually like one of the first things I tried it in. Yeah, damn. Really, you could damn near put Keef in anything hot. Anything hot tea, hot. hot milk. Fucking egg. Lighter in a bomb. Oh, my God. Yeah, you just smoked that bitch. <laughs> Put it in and sprinkle it on a joint. But I don't know. The Keef and the Coffee Licks, that shit stood out to me. I thought that was that was a hard bar. Appreciate it. But it, it also sounded real. I was like, damn, this dude probably does put Keef in his coffee. Like, <laughs> You know what's funny is that when I, I remember That's crazy. freestyling It's like creamer. That. It's like, fuck the creamer. Give me the Keef and the sugar, bitch. I remember freestyling that in Rook. You're at IHOP, like, yeah. <laughs> I remember freestyling that in Rook, like, on the space bar. I was recording. He's like, you really put Keef in your coffee? And I turned to him and I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, bro. Like, you ever done that before? And I explained what I just explained to you to yeah. him. So I've told that story before. And he and was... It's, it's COVID show. made us do weird things, huh? Bro, I lost my taste, lost my smell. Yeah, that fuck. Shit was whack, bro. Fuck, dude. I ain't finna eat a burnt orange to get my shit back either. Never. Finna just... What? <laughs> Is that the <laughs> remedy? Who the fuck thought of that? Bro, TikTok. Oh, my gosh. This cannot be real. A fucking... A burnt orange... They Are said you burn an orange on, like, what like the char fuck, the orange dude. and then, like, eat the orange. Up. Like, I don't I'm know. good, dude. I'll just not taste I'll just it. Not, yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's dug in with that no taste. I could drink 10 bottles of vodka straight. No taste. Hey, yo. Yeah. <laughs> no taste. See, not 10. I'm exaggerating. Probably, you know. Fifth and Henny, no taste. Fifth and Henny. That's my style. That's my style. You favorite. know what I mean? So, quarter pint of moonshine, no taste. 
pint of moonshine. Moonshine. You like moonshine? You ever had moonshine? Bro, I had this old dude make me some moonshine at mm -hmm. like Van Buren one time. I swear that shit almost made me go blind, yo. No. Bro, okay, maybe I'm a little exaggerating, but like that shit, two, two sips, I was, it was good. my body was warm. So if you had cold. to have them for the rest of your life, alcohol or weed? Dude, I don't drink alcohol like that. Yeah. I don't, like when I go to the bar with the homies, we play pool. We don't, I, they drink, I play pool. Yeah, you play pool, yeah. I don't drink. Just sobered up, huh? It, it's not even really weed, it's like, you know. Well, I mean, you're just probably baked off the keef in your coffee, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just go to the bar, let me get a fucking coffee, yeah, I got some keef. <laughs> That'd be funny. Dude, you went and ordered a hot Oklahoma? coffee at a bar and fucking. You know, in Oklahoma, you can take your dab rigs into the bar. So. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's. The, Dude, I'm not even from there, but every time I go there, I just feel like they don't give a fuck. No, no fuck. They don't check me. They're just, we're just, everybody's smoking. Fucking turn up. Turn up. Shout out to Oklahoma, bro. Shout out Oklahoma. Fuck, bro. anywhere you can smoke a cigarette, you can smoke a joint. And that's the mo Let me tell y'all really what the move is. Tell them. Oklahoma, the girls can have their titties out. You can gamble. Yeah. You can buy weed. And... At the end of the day, bro, the land over there is cheap. It's crazy. Oklahoma is popping, bro. I try to tell people from Fayetteville, Oklahoma, Fort Smith area, it is it is popping with the scene when it comes to like recreational cannabis or like in general just land or growing or getting stuff started. If you really want to be a part of that scene and you really want to get stuff done, bro, there are growers out there that will put you on that with yeah like the legal side of everything too like you want a license you want a place to grow your weed you want a place to sell your weed you can sell your weed at your house legally as long as you put bars on the window yeah it's crazy the wild wild west for weed baby stupid wild yeah like to a whole nother level literally but I, I love oklahoma man you know shout out all my oklahoma guys out there doing their thing and so before i forget um you, so you you have your own label. I do. And do you have anybody on the label with you? I just put on a guy for my label. Okay. Um, like I said, there's not a bunch of like money involved in it yet and stuff too. Mm -hmm. But it's an outlet for someone to be able to put their music out there and preach. So this dude that I've not a dude, my homie, mm -hmm. a friend of mine. Someone that I've like taken under my wing for the stuff that he does, cause he's in the military and he does stuff. But shout right. out four seven on Chavis, bro. That's my dog. We actually have a track together too, um, you know. And he just, you know, put it in writing the other day. For what? Some stuff. He's in the military. Yeah, he's in the military. What branch? He's in the army. I, I, I could be wrong. Don't we'll, quote we'll find out. We'll find out. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. Yeah. Um, because you know we're gonna, we won't spill the beans, but. Um, yeah, so you got a guy on on your team now, you know, friend. Friend, yeah. He's a really good, a good friend, friend, good friend. You're helping out. Military guy. But uh, is there anything else you want to tell to people, anything on your heart, anything on your mind? You know, anybody, anything you want them to know about Toasted, you know? Toasted is always toasted, never baked. Hmm. Never read. No, I'm just kidding. But at the end of the day, uh, bro, I'm I'm a real I'm a real genuine dude. Like, um, there ain't nothing really fake about me, bro. I've got a good vibe here. Um, you know, if you want to make a project, hit the DMs, bro. If you want to collab on some shit, hit the DMs, bro. Um, I'm sure my Instagram will be on here somewhere. I'm yeah, I'll put everything in the description. Um, Instagram, Facebook, if Twitter, you, whatever you got. If you want placements, bro, like, I can help people get placements. I really feel like I've gotten not necessarily my whole thumb on this right. connection stuff, but I feel like I've gotten a good grasp of it, too, because at the, okay. end, at the end of the day, bro, like, I just want to make beautiful music, bro. Damn, shout out on the placements. For sure. That's lit. For sure, for sure. So you just, you'll help them out. Yeah, bro. I want to make music. At the end of the day, bro, like, Tell I want to, I want to, um, I want to have so many features and kind of do what Fetty Wap did. I want to, I want to be out there. I want to do, I want to be in the studio for like days straight and get these, everything done. Yeah. Put the legwork in for real. Um, 
So if you have a studio and you like, you know, want me to pop up, bro, and it, and, you know, it, it, you don't, you don't want to fucking fuck with me and stuff. Just let me know, bro. Y'all want to fuck with me? Let me know. Straight up. Straight the fuck up. He said DM him right now. DM me. DM me. DM him right now. Matter of fact, my link tree is in the bio. He has a video of that girl boofing 10 ass strips. I don't. That'd be a crazy video. Dude, that would be an insane video. Holy I shit. Think, I think Connor's got that video. I ain't gonna lie, I used to have that. I don't he has the that, video. I that'd think. be crazy to sp like spit those bars in a song, you know? You ain't shit to bitch boof 10 bars of acid up her ass. Or 10 tabs. However you should put it, that'd be a dark, dope bar. It'd be like 10... 10, 10 on a whip, 10 stripping her butt, 10 to turn up, something up, something up. I don't know, bro. That, why? I don't think I could. Damn. I don't know. That's just got me blown away. That was the, that would be your number one. Oh, yeah. For real? Fuck yeah. Bitch boofed 10 tabs. <laughs> yeah, that's number one. <laughs> and where's she at? Because I need to know. <laughs> bro, I really, I think she was a, I think she was a Ozark Fort Smith chick too. Shout out that chick, bro. Shout out that chick. Toasted. We did the damn thing. Over an hour. We did it. Appreciate you. Long story short. Give, tell them to fuck with Long Story Short Show, man. Bro, That's what we forgot. Y'all go fuck with Long Story Short. Y'all go fuck with Long Story Short. And make sure you follow both of us on Instagram. Mine's duh underscore toasted. And y'all already know Link is a, uh, long story short show so make sure you go run them up damn it's lit long story short